Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. This is the commissioner meeting of February 9th, 2022, here at 6.03 p.m. at Sussex County Community College Performing Arts Center in Newton, New Jersey. I'd like to call this meeting to order and ask Terry to please call the roll. Commissioner Carney. Present. Commissioner Fantasia. Here. Director Fasano. Here. Commissioner Petillo. Here. Okay, everybody's here. Item three on our agenda. Uh, I'll ask if you could please rise with me for a moment of silence and a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice as defined by Section 3D of Chapter 231, PL 1975, has been made by regular mail and email. Such notice being submitted on January 9, 2022, from the Administrative Center of the County of Sussex, located at 1 Spring Street in Newton, New Jersey, to the following. The New Jersey Herald, the Star Ledger, WSUS Radio, and WNNJ Radio. And is also posted on the bulletin board maintained in the Administrative Center for Public Announcements and has been submitted to the Sussex County Clerk in compliance with said act. At this time, we'd like to remind you to please mute all electronic devices. Item five on our agenda is the approval of our agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Commissioner Patillo moves and Commissioner Fantasia seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. Item six on our agenda is our proclamation certificates and presentations. We have two. We'll start with the first one, which I will read into the record, which is in recognition of Black History Month. The proclamation reads, quote, <clears throat> whereas we join our fellow Americans across the United States this February in celebrating Black History Month and the remarkable accomplishments and lasting impact on our nation by our African American leaders and citizens. And whereas during this national celebration, we applaud the significant and lasting contributions of the African American community, which has overcome tremendous adversity to build lasting change in our country and positively influence our culture, national identity, and daily lives. And whereas Black History Month grew from Black History Week, initiated 95 years ago this month on February 12, 1926, by Dr. Carter Godwin Woodson, the son of former slaves, and a distinguished African-American author, editor, publisher, and historian who became known as the father of black history. And whereas Dr. Woodson emphasized the importance of teaching African-American history to every child in this nation, explaining, quote, those who have no record of what their forebears have accomplished lose the inspiration which comes from teaching of biography and history, end quote. And whereas this is a time when we should reflect not only on the great strides made toward freedom for all people, regardless of race, color, or creed, and the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness, but also a time to recognize more must be done to fight injustice, prejudice, and intolerance, wherever it may be. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Sussex County Board of County Commissioners does hereby proclaim February 2022 to be Black History Month in Sussex County and encourages everyone to honor and celebrate the contributions of African Americans to our daily lives in America and towards the betterment of life within Sussex County and across the globe. By the order of the Board of County Commissioners, Anthony Fasano, Commissioner Director, Chris Carney, Deputy Commissioner, Sylvia Petillo, Herb Yardley, and Dawn Fantasia as commissioners. Thank you for that. Item number two on our agenda is in recognition of American Heart Month and Wear Red Day. I know we have Maureen here from Public Health Nursing who will be accepting, and we have Commissioner Fantasia who will be reading this proclamation. Maureen, if you'd like to join me over by the microphone there. Be careful. Watch your step.
Whereas the Sussex Warren Chronic Disease Coalition celebrates the extraordinary progress in women's heart health and recognizes that more needs to be done in Sussex County to safeguard women's health for generations to come. And whereas heart disease is among the leading cause of death among women, and whereas many do not know that heart disease is a women's pro woman's problem and they do not take it seriously, and whereas the risk factors for heart disease are smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and high triglyceride levels, overweight obesity, physical inactivity, metabolic syndrome, diabetes and prediabetes, a family history of early heart disease, age, history of preeclampsia. And whereas women can take action to protect their heart health and prevent heart disease by taking steps to prevent and control the risk factors for the disease. And whereas keeping women healthy and promoting awareness of women's health issues, including heart disease, is an important responsibility and depends on the actions of many organizations and groups in our community. And whereas women's health remains a priority for families, communities, and government, and our commitment to keeping women healthy is stronger than ever. Whereas the Heart Truth Program and its red dress symbol are building awareness of women's heart disease risk and empowering them to reduce their risk and prevent heart disease. Therefore, women need to take action to make heart health a priority for themselves and their families, become aware of their risk for heart disease, and take action for their heart health. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Sussex County Board of County Commissioners do hereby proclaim February 2022 as American Heart Month and that Friday, February 4th, 2022, was National Wear Red Day. The county commissioners encourage our citizens to support efforts to reduce heart disease and stroke in both women and men. By the order of the Board of County Commissioners, Anthony Fasano, Commissioner Director, Christopher Carney, Deputy Commissioner, and Commissioner Sylvia Patillo, Herb Yardley, and Dawn Fantasia. Thank you so much. Would you like to say? Good evening and thank you um, again for the support of our public health mission to prevent chronic disease in general and certainly heart disease. Um, so I just brought some data so now as we get, you know, we're into 2020, we're going towards 2030 and healthy people. 2030 is supporting health equity and social determinants of health. And data collection is very important. So I pulled some data off of the North Jersey Health Collaborative, which is a um, organization that I am I'm actually president-elect. And they store all of our um, data from federal down to county and local, whatever is submitted. So, unfortunately, these go back to 2017 and 19 because that's how it works, but the heart attack rate is 3.3%. It's below the New Jersey state level, and this is for Sussex County. Over time, it is slowly decreasing. Coronary, coronary heart disease rate, 4.1%, slightly above the New Jersey value. Um, over time, it is slowly increasing, but not significantly. Age-adjusted heart rate due to heart attack, 45.6 individuals per 100,000. Over time, Sussex County is decreasing significantly. Age-adjusted death rate for heart disease, 176.5 per 100,000. Better than the New Jersey level. Over, over time, the rate is decreasing significantly. So we've had some big gains and some... Um, you know, small increases, which, which happens, but we continue to, to support health in our community members. Um, just something to report, because we all love to hear about COVID. Um, preliminary reports, now this is preliminary, that the risk burden of cardiovascular disease is up for one year after a COVID diagnosis. It is not it is not just people with high risks, but it covers all individuals, low risk, younger, men, women, and all races. So another burden that COVID has put on us is, is um, cardiovascular disease. So we work um, to get that back. 
get back into where we were. Um, we continue, Sussex County Public Health Nursing continues to outreach into the community to teach prevention of all chronic diseases. And um, again, I thank you for your support. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. With mask or with? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Commissioner Fantasia. <clears throat> okay, with that, I need a motion to adopt our proclamations. Are there any motions? So moved. Commissioner Patillo moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Carney seconds. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstaining? Motion carries. Item number seven on our agenda is our public hearings, and we do have a public hearing for final adoption. Uh, at our regular meeting held on January 26, 2022, we introduced for first reading the following resolution, which was advertised in the New Jersey Herald issue of 2008-2022, uh, I'm sorry, January 28, 2022, together with a notice of public hearing stating that it would be held at this meeting here at 6 p.m. This is a resolution authorizing cap to limit county budget appropriation increase in calendar year 2018. Uh, county budget to 3.5% over the previous year's final appropriation subject to certain exceptions and to establish an appropriation cap bank. Uh, I, I want to just uh, explain this one more time that this is a financial tool that the board takes uh, every year. The board has absolutely no desire in our upcoming budget to have a budget reflect anywhere near a 3.5% increase, uh, but I think as Commissioner Fantasia put at our last meeting really well, if an emergency were to take place, if a building were to go on fire, if the county were to need uh, this type of tool available to it, that is what we are voting on. Uh, but again, uh, the county has no desire to have our budget reflect a 3.5% increase. And in fact, uh, a week from today, uh, we do have our budget workshop regarding our budget, uh, which should hopefully prove that. Uh, so with that, is there a motion to have the public hearing be opened? So moved. Commissioner Fantasia moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Commissioner Patillo seconds. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstaining? Motion carries. Is there anybody here to be present? Is there anybody present to be heard regarding this resolution? <clears throat> Seeing none, I need a motion that this public hearing be closed. So moved. Second. Commissioner Fantasia moves. Commissioner Patillo seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. Now I need a motion that this resolution be finally adopted. So moved. Second. Commissioner Fantasia moves. Commissioner Patillo seconds. Uh, any discussion? And this is a motion to authorize the clerk to advertise this resolution as finally adopted and also post the same in the bulletin board in the lobby of the county administrative center. So we have a motion. We have a second. Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Fantasia? Yes. Director Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Item carries. Item 8 on our agenda is our public session from the floor. This public session is for those wishing to make a comment of three minutes or less regarding an agenda item. There is a separate time uh, for public comments for non-agenda items. We ask that you please line up at the microphone and maintain a six feet social distance with other attendees. When you arrive to the microphone, please state your name, your municipality, and the agenda topic for the record. Once public session is closed, I will do my best to answer uh, any public comments. I also wanted to mention I see some folks here from uh, High Street in Newton, and I do have a report on that for my public comments as well. So with that, is there a motion to open the floor for public comment regarding agenda items only? So moved. Second. Commissioner Patilla moves. Commissioner Fantasia seconds. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries, and we are now open to public comment for agenda items <coughs> only. Seeing no one come up, I now need a motion to close the floor for public comment. So moved. Commissioner Patillo moves. Second. Commissioner Fantasia seconds. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. We're on to item nine, which is commissioner comments. And this time we're going to start to my left with Commissioner Patillo. Okay. Thank you very much. I want to welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm going to start with the Sussex County Homeless Point in Time Count. On January 26, 2022, Sussex County participated in the statewide Homeless Point in Time Count. The county, in collaboration with service providers, interviewed homeless individuals and families staying in shelters, transitional housing programs, hotels, and other locations throughout Sussex County. The results of these efforts will be published by the state at a later date. There is a resolution on the agenda this evening for Sussex County to receive $193,260 in social services for the Homeless Fund for 2022. This funding is utilized to provide Sussex County residents with emergency overnight shelter, homelessness, and homelessness prevention services. Now for the Office of Public Health Nursing. We have clinics, and the first one is a woman's health clinic that will be held on Thursday, February 24th, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Office of Public Health Nursing. To make an appointment, call the Office of Public Health Nursing at 973-579-0570, extension 1246. <coughs> there will also be a child health conference clinic, which will be held on Tuesday, February 15th, from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at the Office of Public Health Nursing. This clinic offers complete physical exams, screenings, and age-appropriate immunizations for children ages zero to five years old that are without health insurance. To make an appointment, please call 973-579-0570, extension 1211. There's a health check clinic that will be held on Tuesday, February 15th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Office of Public Health Nursing. The clinic offers vaccines for adults and school-aged children. To make an appointment, call the Office of Public Health Nursing at 973-579-0570, extension 1211. Now the communicable disease investigations. From January 1st through January 31st, there were 16 reportable diseases investigated other than COVID cases by public health nursing in Sussex County. Hepatitis C was the most investigated disease. There was also uh, two active lead cases in Sussex County. For the rabies report, from January 1st through January 31st, there were 37 domestic or wild animal bites reported and investigated. Reports consisted of bites from dogs, there were 22, cats, three, Raccoons, four, horses, two, a bat, one, and a bear, one. Two animals tested positive for rabies, and they were both raccoons. For the Senior Services Center for Lifelong Learning at Sussex County Community College, and I would just like to say that this is a really important um, presentation that they're going to be holding at the college. It's a Zoom presentation, and it's about internet safety for seniors. The Center for Lifelong Learning will offer a free presentation on Friday, February 25th at 3 p.m. via Zoom or telephone. Learn about scams and frauds targeted at seniors and how to protect yourself. For more information and to register, please call the Sussex County Division of Senior Services at 973-579-0555, extension 1277. I'm going to say that one more time. You just call the Sussex County Division of Senior Services at 973-579-0555, extension 1277. Okay. Uh, these scams are changing all the time, and it's really important that you get updated so you understand um, how easy it is to fall for some of these things. 
Uh, Senior Services Caregiver Support Group will be held at the Apacon Community Resource and Wellness Center. Uh, that group will be meeting in person uh, at 47 Apachong Road in Apacon from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, February 15th. And for more information or to register to attend these meetings, please call the Division of Senior Services at 973-579-0555 extension 1288. Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. NorWestCap will be offering volunteer income tax assistance services. There will be no in-person appointments. Therefore, individuals must bring their paperwork to a specified location, and the copy of the completed return will be mailed or emailed. Drop-off appointments are available on Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 17 Church Street in Newton, or on Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Sussex, I'm sorry, at the Sparta Library located at 20 Woodport Road in Sparta. To schedule an important an appointment, please call 973-784-4900, extension 2902. And the last report I have is United Way is also offering volunteer income tax assistance services for free for low and moderate income households. For assistance, email United Way Tax Prep, P R E P, at United Way, N N J dot org, or call 973 993 1160, extension 521. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Patillo. We'll move to Commissioner Fantasia. Thank you. Um, first, from the Department of Health, the Sussex County Division of Health, in collaboration with Sparta Pharmacy, is continuing to offer the drive through COVID-19 vaccines, uh, both Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, actually, and Pfizer as well for age 12 and up, and Pfizer Pediatric 5 to 11. Uh, clinics are being held upcoming this Saturday, February 12th from 9 to 12 at the Sussex County Fairgrounds. And on Thursday, February 10th, which is tomorrow at the Hopakong Firehouse Number 3 from 10 a.m. To, to 1 p.m. You can fill out a consent form in advance by visiting www.sussex.nj. US and also public health nursing continues to provide homebound vaccinations for uh, those who may not be mobile and able to get out of their homes. Uh, New Jersey Department of Health reports that Sussex County residents have received 186,299 doses of the vaccine. That's 102,955 first doses. 90,987 residents are fully vaccinated. Um, as far as COVID virus updates, our COVID-19 activity level for our region indicates the entire state as coded orange, which is high. So no longer red, which was very high. It's pretty consistent with other states across the nation. And I digress when I say different states have very, very different uh, restrictions or mandates. And uh, we do see that ours with all the restrictions New Jersey places on us are just about the same percentage-wise as states with very little uh, restrictions to our freedoms. Um, we also have here for the past week, we've been reporting an average of 45 cases uh, daily, which is starkly down from where we were at before. Um, Delta variant is estimated to represent 4.1% of the identified variants across the state and Omicron is about 95%. Uh, there's decreasing numbers. County has a total of 34,074 cases from the start. And that's about just shy of 25% of our population has reported a positive test for COVID. There's been a total of 440 deaths, representing 1.3% of all cases, with obviously the largest share of those happening in our uh, nursing homes. As far as hospitalizations, these are starkly down. In January, we had 207 hospitalizations. Now in February, for the first week in February, uh, is reported we have nine hospitalizations. So we see that going significantly down. Currently, there's 22 outbreaks in the county, one in an acute care facility, 
nine in long-term care facilities, that's staff and residents, so nine out of the 19 long-term care facilities I think we have here in the county, two in group homes, five schools and five daycares. And again, an outbreak is classified when transmission is traced back to that facility, not that random people came to the facility and brought it in from the community. It's actually spread or traced to be spread at that location. Uh, for more information about booster shots, including your eligibility requirements, vaccinations, testing, or the COVID-19 virus, please visit www.sussex.nj.us, or you can always call the Office of Public Health Nursing at 973-579-0570, extension 1211. I'd like to thank Carol Novert again for uh, making sure this information is compiled every week and given to us also uh, for the mayors, for the monthly mayor's calls. They're always kept up to date and the specifics about even towns and where outbreaks might be in lo you know, located in town, so we appreciate that. Um, moving on, uh, last week I met with our CFO and our administrator to go over the budget, which was a much appreciated meeting, uh, and I look forward to our budget workshop that is open to the public uh, next that? week. Uh, week, no? week from today, I believe, isn't it the 19th? Uh, 19th? No. Not the 19th. Terry, can you confirm that date for the budget workshop, please? Well, today's, today's the 9th. 16th. 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 Sorry. 15th? I inverted my 16th. 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 Yeah. Okay. It's the 16th. You call the 15th. That's right. It's a Wednesday. Wednesday the 16th, February 16th, <laughs> is our budget workshop. Um, also, I uh, had a meeting with um, the annual meeting for the Sussex County Arts and Heritage Council. I was very happy to see new faces there. Um, nice, diverse group. Uh, that's put together there. They laid out their plans for the upcoming year. Again, they've gotten their resumes for an executive director who'll be managing now. And uh, I just saw a new life breathed into that group. It was the largest meeting I've attended, uh, you know, by number of attendees. And they also have somebody that's managing their social media posts now. So if you follow them on Facebook, they always have, you know, going what's happening. So if art is your thing, specifically visual arts, they do a great job with that. So take a look at that. Now moving on, we, we had something a little new uh, this, this year. We broke up into uh, different committee structures or whatnot, but Commissioner Carney and I are um, reporting back from District 24 specifically, and tonight I took on that role for the two of us. And I wanna give you just a couple updates here as to what's going on in Trenton, what our District 24 legislators are doing on behalf of us. So first of all, one of the largest things that came out of, uh, of Trenton was Senate Bill 1200, which is a bill to uh, limit Governor Murphy's uh, extensions of executive powers. As you're aware, uh, we're just around 700 days into two weeks to stop the spread. So if you were concerned or counting, we're at about day 700. So this bill provides for the termination of a state of emergency declaration issued by the governor or a public health emergency declaration um, by the legislature by concurrent resolution if the resolution receives a two-thirds affirmative vote of the authorized membership of each house of the legislature. But I hope you all are sitting down because this is big. Normally this splits on partisan lines. However, Senator Vin Gopal, who is in District 11, I believe, in Monmouth County, is a premier Democrat and who is also chairing the uh, Senate Education Committee yeah. this year, is a co-sponsor with Senator Declan O'Scanlan from District 13 in Monmouth County, along with a slew of Senate representatives mm -hmm. who are Republicans, Senator Orho also being one of them. So this is moving the needle by far, um, by far, uh, to actually hold accountable from both houses. Uh, understanding that our elected body, and I've talked about this multiple times before in these meetings, we elect 120 representatives to the legislature who are an equal branch of government to the executive branch and who now demand a seat back at the table to help make these decisions that govern our state. So I'm looking very forward to seeing uh, that bill move forward. I certainly hope it does not split among partisan lines, which you know has happened before. You know that we've been lockstep sometimes. Uh, all 120 legislators have voted on something, for instance, the business, uh, small business relief bill to give funds specifically to restaurants and hospitality industry, and uh, 120 affirmative votes, and the governor vetoed it. And we needed to challenge that veto, but uh, on the Republican side, there simply weren't enough votes 
to be able to do that. And uh, the Democrats remained silent, even though they supported uh, giving the, that money to small businesses. So this just appears to be just a little bit of a, a little bit of a chink in the armor, which is really great. Uh, and that takes me to my final point uh, that's coming out of Trenton. It is called the Give It Back Initiative. And Senate Republicans are launching the Give It Back Initiative to help New Jerseyans tell Governor Phil Murphy to give back everything that we have lost in the pandemic. Senator Oroho is quoted to say, Governor Murphy has taken so much from New Jerseyans since the start of the pandemic. He's taken money, he's taken power, and he's taken rights, choices, and freedoms from every single New Jerseyan. We're going to help New Jerseyans to send a message to give it back. So therefore, there is an online petition, and uh, what you are asked to do is sign the petition and please post short videos on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all social media with your thoughts to share with our governor regarding what you may have lost or what you have witnessed during the pandemic. Um, and here are some of the areas uh, that the Senate Republicans have published for us to take a look at here. Your voice, give it back. Bill S-1200, Governor Murphy took power from the people and their elected legislators by granting himself emergency powers and ruling by executive order for roughly 700 days at this point. Parental rights. Governor Murphy took away parental rights by issuing mask mandates for toddlers and children in daycare. COVID vaccine choice. As you know, this board always will act in the interest of public health and regardless of personal feelings or however, we have a job and that job is to make sure that we are giving choices and we are acting responsibly to the public and make you aware at any and all times of what is available to you, what vaccinations, what testing. Uh, we are, you know, the conduits of information throughout the pandemic and I think that we have done a good job and again, there is no place at this table for personal feelings when it comes to that. We have delivered solid information to the public. Again, reiterating that this is your choice, not your mandate. Uh, economic freedom, give it back. Governor Murphy took economic freedom through orders and mandates that destroyed one third of New Jersey's small businesses which are now permanently shuttered. Safe streets. Governor Murphy took away our safe streets by releasing 40% of the inmates from state prison. And I spoke about this at another meeting prior to their release date. Some were COVID positive with no plans for reintegration. So now we see recidivism rates of these individuals who were not given the proper support, who were not connected with the proper resources in a complete knee jerk reaction that caused a public health disaster on top of what was already a dangerous situation with the disease spreading in prisons. Completely ridiculous. So I urge you to hashtag whatever way you want that says give it back and get mouthy just like I am and let's let our governor know that it is time, 700 days into two weeks to stop the spread. I think we've all had enough, quite enough. Well, that's my report for tonight, thank you. Thank you, that's thank you Commissioner Fantasia. Commissioner Yardley. Oh. We have uh, three commissioners liaison to the health services, um, so you're going to get another some more health stuff to you right now. Um, Division of Health continually, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, evaluates the uh, cases of uh, COVID, and uh, they've wor been working. I don't know how many months now. What 24 hours a day has it been? a year or more, uh, just about, they're available 20, seven, seven days a week, just about, if you have a call, you can reach somebody. Uh, it, it is one of the jobs that it's kind of unsung, you know, because they do it, you don't see them, they're not on the street, they're not on TV, but they do this work all, all the time. And the number for the month of January, they were able to uh, put um, 6,097 cases that were investigated and closed for the, uh, during the month of January in the CDRSS system. And that's a uh, system that um, takes all of the cases and it has all of the pertinent information in it and contact information. And it's a very valuable tool. 
so that we can actually find other people that have been exposed. It's also a very frustrating job because generally people, I'll change that, some people just don't answer the phone or give information. So I think that's uh, commendable to get that number uh, <coughs> of people. And I just wanted to also mention, uh, Dawn was talking about choice and I've gotten all of the shots. But there are those people that don't want to get the shots. And that's their choice. We live, we are supposed to live in a society, and I agree with her 100% that the governor has taken much away from the state. And I agree with you, and a very good report. Thank you for that. Um, also, <clears throat> there's a senior assistance program, Division of Senior, uh, senior Services. I received a state health grant, uh, assistant program of $36,000, and it assists individuals with questions concerning Medicare. Uh, and provides assistance with uh, plan comparisons. Uh, as you get older, that's a very important thing. The Division of Senior Services also wants to remind everybody that the pharmaceutical, there's a pharmaceutical assistance for the aged and disabled. Uh, it's increased, the qualifications have increased for the year 2022. Unmarried individual with a maximum income of $38,769, or a married couple with the max of $45,270 may qualify. And that's your gross, that's not your take home. It's not a lot of money. Um, we also, <coughs> also attended the meeting of the Association of Counties, and that's the group, uh, 21 counties. Uh, it helps uh, to work at a group, and it works with the legislature to help assist uh, with county issues, those things that affect the county. And as we uh, get more of that information, I'll bring that attention to the board. Um, just general interest, if you own a house, you're, you're paying about a dollar more for oil. Anybody buy oil in the audience? Okay, so uh, the last, I think it's around 3.30, uh, around that price. Uh, last, I think, I just remember about 1.90, it was really cheap, then it went to 2.45, and. Uh, then it jumped, it's, that was last year and the year before, then it jumped up recently. Um, so if you're getting a thousand gallons of oil, that cost just increased by a thousand dollars. That's it. Okay, and that's it, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Commissioner Yardley. Uh, I'll keep my report brief. Um, I appreciate the commissioner's reports, all of those reports. I don't want to um, continue to drive. Oh, wait. <laughs> she oh, my goodness. I forgot my deputy director. I apologize. <laughs> Your report was so good, Chris, I forgot about it. No, you're, 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 you're antsy. You, you want to get going. Sorry, deputy. All yours. <laughs> all right. Thank you, director. I will be brief. Um, I just want to go over the guide rail upgrade program for 2022. The Division of Engineering will begin advancing design for the 2022 Guide Rail Upgrade Program. This year's program will include the evaluation and upgrade of guide rail systems along County Route 631 in Franklin and Hardiston, County Route 605 in Hopakong, Byram in Sparta, and County Route 655 in Frank Frankfurt. Collectively, these three routes represent just under 14 miles of county routes and include 80 guide rail system consisting of 25,000 feet or 4.7 miles of guide rail in 154 terminal ends. The construction investment is estimated at $1.75 million. The final program will be adjusted based upon final design scope of work and budget allocations. The Division of Engineering maintains the Sussex County Guide Rail Management System as an inventory and tracking tool enhancement management capabilities of the guide rail systems. The guide rail management system currently includes an inventory of 1,938 guide rail systems having a total length of 470,000 feet or 89 miles. Based upon current condition assessments, the Division of Engineering estimates that about 50% of the systems are in need of repairs due to damage and about 80% of the systems are in need of repair, replacement, or due from old age. Concurrent with the 2022 Capital Guide Rail Upgrade Program, the Division of Public Health Works will continue to operate an in-house guide rail repair crew. The in-house guide rail crew focuses on repairs of isolated damage occurring to newer guide rail systems. 
So if somebody smashes it into them that they're new, we go and replace them. Uh, all the old ones will get done by a subcontractor. These programs represent a positive step forward, forward supported by the board in managing the system and enhancing overall operation safety along our county route system. Um, I want to let everybody know most of the time we, we don't get rave reviews, whether it be on Facebook, social media of any sort, uh, or the New Jersey Herald. Uh, but I was able to go down to the fleet garage last week and I met with um, the supervisor down there and a few few of the workers, uh, the mechanics came in and, and talked to me a little bit. And the morale was very, very high. I know in the past it's it hasn't been. Um, they were very appreciative. Uh, they are ahead of schedule um, for spring, right? They're gonna bring all their spring materials in, tractors and all mm -hmm. the stuff that they have. Um, but very, very good morale. They were happy to see that we have their back. Uh, it was said to me multiple times by uh, a few of their employees, which, which was good. Uh, coincidentally, I, I got a text message from another DPW garage, um, basically saying the same thing, that you know there, there's a, a new board per se, or maybe a, a new outlook, how we look at them, and uh, they're very appreciative. And uh, that makes me feel good, right? Because you know you spend a little time down there and uh, they gotta, you get a thank you out of it instead of getting beat up the other way, as most of the time we do. So it was good to hear, and I wanted to share that with you guys. And that is all I have. Oh, you know what? And I actually brought up uh, green, going green. I told you guys that we bought some county cars. So I did talk to them about that, and that they're on board with it. I'll have to talk to maybe Greg a little bit about um, how obviously we could pay for that education because there is a little different education. <coughs> And then once, if we do go that way, obviously we'll have to get some uh, ports for that charging stations and so on and so forth. So anyway, thank you. <coughs> thank you for that, Commissioner Carney. That was, that was a very good report, so thank you. Once in a while. <laughs> All right, uh, I do promise to keep my report brief. Uh, uh, I don't wanna spend too much time on COVID because as we've heard, uh, uh, cases are going down, but that, that is what I did want to talk about, is since last month, the Sussex County Division of Health has distributed over 7,000 free at-home COVID-19 tests. These tests were distributed to residents and municipalities. Again, that is since last month. The county, in partnership with Vault Health and the New Jersey Department of Health, has also opened a free walk-in uh, COVID-19 testing site. That site, since January 25th, uh, uh, has conducted 230 PCR and 115 rapid tests, uh, but the number of these tests, <clears throat> excuse me, are continuing to decline, of course, because demand for tests is declining, and everything the county has done when it comes to uh, our testing strategy um, and when it comes to uh, what resources we have out there in the county, it's based off of demand, and that's what this site was generated from. Uh, uh, although there is nothing, and I have heard nothing, I'm expecting this site to also be decommissioned because of demand at some point. Uh, but regardless, um, the number of tests administered and the number of positive tests in the county are declining. I did want to remind you to please remember to check the county's website uh, for not only vaccination and testing clinic uh, information, but also updates during inclement weather. That is where you can find that. Uh, free at-home tests will continue to be offered through a program sponsored by Sussex County, and all of that information can be found right on our county website, which is sussex.nj.us, uh, and you can click on Get Tested. I also just briefly wanted to mention something that was cool. You know, we, we were part of a lot of meetings and a part of a lot of discussions with our team, and you hear things being developed, and you get to see things from it being birthed from an idea to it actually happening on the ground level. and. Uh, one of those items, or at least what I think will be one of those items, <clears throat> is right here uh, at Sussex County Community College. Sussex County is actively working with Sussex County Community College in efforts aimed at increasing rideshare accessibility and demand. These are services such as Lyft and Uber, uh, and they're becoming increasingly important tools for public transportation, not just uh, here in Sussex County, but in essence everywhere, particularly in the evening hours. Uh, the county has had a focus on rideshare services. Um, as someone who is 
in a demographic of those who go to the bars on weekends and rely on rideshare services, I can attest to the need for an expanded uh, <laughs> offering. Um, but it is really important for a lot of reasons, actually, for Sussex County. It's, 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 uh, it's a preconceived notion that it's for people like me who use it to go to, to bars and stuff, but it's not. It's actually for people to get to work, to get to medical appointments, to get to grocery stores, and that's what makes that really important from a transportation standpoint. That's why we care about it here in Sussex County. I'm thrilled that the college feels the same, and I hope those efforts uh, yield uh, a better result and better, um, and better service, rideshare service here in Sussex County. Uh, Spring Street, and I think I said High Street before. It's Spring Street, right? Yeah. High Street's another issue. So on Spring Street, uh, I did just want to mention uh, first, thank you for coming to our previous meeting. Uh, uh, as we discussed, and as I think most know, it is the building inspector and the zoning officer in the town of Newton who has the authority and the responsibility uh, for issues occurring, specifically mold issues occurring within their municipality. Also, the NJDCA also shares a responsibility when it comes to multi-unit buildings. However, since the last board meeting, uh, uh, the Division of Health, uh, our inspector, has followed up with the Town of Newton, the Division of Community Affairs, and RPM, the facility itself. Our health inspector, inspector is speaking with RPM currently, asking to have the apartment cleaned and painted. As we noted, the county has no authority in this matter uh, and has no authority over this facility, uh, but I do really appreciate Bringing, these attention, bringing this to our attention so that we can convey to these institutions, to those who are responsible, that this is unacceptable. The county finds it to be unacceptable. The county expects this to be addressed quickly. The county expects a response, and the county will continue to follow up and do something if that doesn't happen. I also know you have right behind you, I, I think you met, Carol Novert, who is my right-hand person when it comes to these issues. She is fantastic, and she is very much, although she may not look it, uh, she is the strength uh, to hold these people accountable. Uh, but I did just want to give you that update. All right, that's it for me. We have some things to uh, get moving on here. So I'm going to move to item number 10 on our agenda, which is the approval of our consent agenda. The Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex has review reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions and determined that adoption of said resolutions is in and will further, th will further the public interest. If any commissioner would like to remove an item to be considered separately, please do so now. Hearing none, is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda items A through C? So moved. Commissioner Patillo moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Fantasia seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? That motion carries. Item 11 on our agenda is the approval of our minutes from both our regular and executive session on January 26, 2022. All board members were present for that. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from our regular meeting and executive session? So moved. Um, second. Commissioner Patilla moves. Commissioner Yardley seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? I'm sorry, you were right. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. Item 12 on our agenda is our appointments and or resignations. We have three items. Is there a motion to adopt items 12A through C? Still move. Commissioner Carney moves. Second. Commissioner Fantasia seconds. Any discussion? Now, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Fantasia? Yes. Director Cassano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Item 13 on our agenda is our resolutions portion. Are there any motions to adopt items 13A through F? So moved. Commissioner Patillo moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Carney seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Commissioner Carney? 
Yes. Commissioner Van Baker? Yes. 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 Item 14 on our agenda is awards of contracts, change orders, and bids. The Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex has reviewed the award of contract change orders and bids consisting of various proposed resolutions and determined that adoption of said resolutions is in and will further, th and will further the public interests. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 14A? So moved. Commissioner Patilla moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Fantasia seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Menard, please. Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Fantasia? Yes. Director Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patilla? Yes. Item 15 on our agenda is we have to pay the bills. So there's a resolution to do as such. Do I have a motion to pay the bills list? So moved. Commissioner Fantasia moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner mm -hmm. Carney seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Fantasia? Yes. Director Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patilla? Yes. Item 16 on our agenda is our personnel agenda, authorizing our personnel agenda of February 9th. Is there a motion to adopt the personnel agenda? So moved. Commissioner Patilla moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Yardley seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Fantasia? Yes. Director Fasano? Yes. Yes. Okay, moving on to item number 17. That is our administrative report. Commissioner Poff, I'll give it off to you. Thank you very much, Director. Uh, as we've got a number of things in executive session to discuss this evening, I'll keep my report brief. Uh, as reported by the commissioners this evening, we are looking forward to our budget work session next week, uh, next week Wednesday. Uh, which will be held here and uh, I'm very pleased with the progress that we've made on the budget and appreciate all of the commissioners time and attention uh, you know how voluminous uh, that effort is a lot of hard work has gone into it and we're looking forward to being able to present that uh, to the board and the public next week uh, also too I was contacted by New Jersey Natural Gas who has expressed interest in extending natural gas service from Netcong into Stanhope and Byram. Uh, I see the director shaking his head, uh, who was also contacted by New Jersey Natural Gas. A uh, preliminary meeting has uh, been set up within the next week or so uh, that uh, I believe it's actually next week Tuesday uh, that I will be attending uh, along with the director as well as a representative from our engineering group uh, to discuss those preliminary plans and get a better sense as to what's going on. It's, it's interesting with the commissioners having just authorized the extension of service uh, and the road opening permit to Byram Township for Elizabeth Town, Town Gas. That work, in fact, has, has already started. Uh, and given the topography of Byram, there would be no way for Elizabeth Town Gas to extend natural gas service to the southern part of Byram Township. So uh, it's my understanding that uh, Mayor Rubenstein down in Byram Township had been advocating to get uh, New Jersey Natural Gas uh, and the BPU to agree to amend the uh, service franchise. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how this prog project progresses and being able to provide additional natural gas service uh, to county residents. So, and that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Do we have a county council report? Um, I would just like to briefly note that uh, board members, you were provided a report from county council. I would just bring your attention to item one, the opioid litigation. Um, the time frame for municipalities and counties throughout the country to opt into the settlement was the end of January. It does appear that enough uh, participants signed up for the settlement and um, however the deadline for the settling defendants to review everything and make a determination whether um, all conditions of the settlement were met. Um, we believe um, based upon the information we have that everything was met so we could be seeing funds from that settlement sometime in April or May of this year. Thank you very much for that report. 
Item 19 on our agenda is unfinished business. Do any board members have any unfinished business? Seeing none, item 20 in our, on our agenda is new business. Do any board members have any new business? Yeah, I just have <coughs> some quick numbers for everybody. I should have read this before on my commissioner's comments, but just since we have an audience out there, and I can pass this around to you guys, this is the census from 2020. Um, back in 2010, so our census is done every 10 years, for those who don't know that, uh, 20, 2010, population of Sussex County was 144,333. 2020 population is, I'm sorry, I take that back. 2010 is 149,265. This year's population is 144. So we lost around 5,000, almost 6,000 uh, residents in the county. The only two municipalities that went up is Green Township they were at 3601, now they're at 3631. And Newton, uh, they were at around 8,000 roughly, uh, now they're at 8403. Vernon went down about 1,000. Uh, they were at 23,943, and they're down to 22,371. Now keep in mind, this was done before uh, COVID hit, uh, and you know, you saw an influx of people moving in here. But at the same time, you're not seeing houses being built you're seeing people move out and people trading trading spots. So I don't think that's off that much. Um, you know, there's some new homes in Sparta, but for the most part, there's not an influx of housing compared to the people that came to the county. But you can get that information. If you want more information, you go on the clerk's website and get that information. But I figured I'd share that with you all. And if you want to take a look at that when we, at the end of our meeting, I'll show it to you. Thank, Thank you. you, that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Carney. Any other new business? Okay, item 21 is our public session from the floor. This public session is for those wishing to make general comments about anything and everything of three minutes or less on non-agenda topics. When you arrive to the microphone, please uh, maintain six feet social distance with other attendees and state your name and municipality for the record. At the conclusion of our public session, I will do my best to answer any questions or comments. Item 21 is our public session from the floor. Is there a motion to open the floor to public comment? So moved. Commissioner Fantasia moves. Commissioner Patillo seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. The floor is now open. The floor is yours. If you can just state your uh, name and municipality for the record. My name is Susan Kelly, and I live at 225 Spring Street. And just to bring you up to date on the outcome of our PM, they presented themselves with four individuals yesterday and checked out approximately five apartments. Each apartment they went into, they designated it as dust. They came to my apartment, and as soon as they came in, I, before I opened the door, I put audio on my phone so I could get the whole conversation. And when they walked in, I handed them the mold report from the specialists that I had brought in. And they still tried to convince me it was dust and household negativity. And before they left, they informed me that they get somebody that was knowledgeable on the mold report and get back to me on that. Now, I know that you've all done everything that you could. I'm sitting here listening to all these organizations and uh, all these different um, representations that help individuals. Well, recently to my knowledge, I was just informed that the state of New Jersey does not have a mold regulation. So whatever RPM decides to do, that's going to be it. Those that are dealing with medical issues, negative, most of them, are going to be on their own because there's no way of proving individual medical cases that are related to mold infestation or toxicity other than mimicking regular uh, breathing issues, uh, sight, things like that. 
So if there's an organization out there that I can reach out to that actually is there to help, I don't care if it's financial or just guiding, I would greatly appreciate it because right now it looks like they're going to win. Thank you. William Hayden, Frankfurt, New Jersey. Today on my way home, I stumbled upon something disturbing that should trouble us all. Sparta patrolman did a traffic stop, didn't go so well, passenger jumped out and started shooting back. What ensued was 30, over 30 patrols coming to the area to give backup and search for the individual who said he would not go peacefully. This is a result of the defund the police movement. I know all of you, all of you have said you backed the blue. I've been at Back to Blue events. Um, this is going to creep up here. With all of those patrolmen, officers, deputies there, uh, it kind of made things a little less coverage countywide. Uh, right now, we have a problem with our sheriff's department not having a contract. We have about 10 deputies that are eligible for food stamps. That's kind of disturbing. The people who will get shot at may have to feed their family with food stamps. I don't think any of you are on food stamps. I don't think our county administrators are on food stamps. Have any of you been shot at? No. So maybe we could help the sheriff retain his men, because I know he lost another one yesterday. He left. And get them a contract. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? <clears throat> okay, seeing none, is there a motion to close public comment and return to regular business? So moved. Commissioner Patilla moves. Second. There is second. Commissioner Carney seconds. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. Item 22 on our agenda is our reminders, and our reminder tonight is to please check the county website at sussex.nj.us for meeting schedules. Item 23 is our resolution uh, regarding executive session for the closed session we're about to enter into, and I will hand it off to Terry for her to read. Whereas the subject matters about to be discussed may be excluded from the public portion of the meeting by resolution of the Board of County Commissioners as an exception to the Open Public Meetings Act pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4-12B and whereas it appears necessary to the Board of County Commissioners to discuss such matters in executive session now therefore be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex in accordance with the provisions of NJSA 10 colon 4-12B and NJSA 10 colon 4-13 that the board at this time enter into an executive session from which the public shall be excluded and be it further result that the general nature of the subjects to be discussed relate to the following items authorized by NJSA 10 colon dash 4 dash 12 B as designated item number seven matters relating to litigation negotiations and the attorney client privilege topics are American Rescue Plan Act attorney client communication PBA 138 prosecutor's office PBA 138 Sheriff's Office Legal Services. Item 8, Matters Relating to the Employment Relationship. Topic, Personnel Policies. Be it further resolved that the deliberations conducted in closed session may be discussed to the public upon the determination of the Sussex County Board of County Commissioners or provided that the law, that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality and be it further resolved that upon completion of the business which the board has entered into the executive session, the board shall not. not reconvene and will not resume its meeting open to the public and therefore the board will adjourn its meeting from executive session. Thank you, Terry. With that, is there a motion to adopt the executive session resolution and enter into executive session? So moved. Second. Commissioner Patillo moves. Commissioner Fantasia seconds. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? And we are now in executive session. Thank you so much for coming. Get home safe. Thank you. <laughs>